Hi folks, this is, uh, this is another, another senior moment. Uh, as I mentioned, I think on our Friday night video, uh, people have asked me about the different things that I do, some of the stuff that I've done that I've come up with, and some of the different, uh, different ways I do things. So I was just going to show you, I made, <clears throat> I made and I have made these for years. These are just table numbers. I make them and I sell them online. I don't get much for them, but I sell them online and I do pretty well with them. Uh, and this is this is what they are. These are six inch numbers. These are intended for like wedding receptions and special occasions, but just table numbers. They can be they can be painted. They can. I've had customers that have painted them gold and put jewels on them. You know the Swarovski crystals on them. All sorts of things, but basically what they are is I just cut these numbers out of quarter inch red oak plywood and I cut the bases are the same. And the bases, I make them so that the numbers fit in them and then when they're done, I just use a drop of hot glue and I glue them in and I hold them till, they, till they're all set and they're all done. So that's just what that's what this video is going to be all about. So what <clears throat> we'll start off take care of, we'll take the camera out to the shop and I'll show you how I cut these on the Onsred inverted router. Uh, so that's how it'll start, and then we'll come back in here and I'll show you how I put them together. Okay, and we go on. Here's the uh, here's the way I cut the numbers. Uh, I have patterns, I've made patterns, this is out of HDPE, high density polyethylene. I have screws in it. These screws stick through the back slightly, the back of the pattern, so that when I put it on the board, the, the material that I'm cutting it out of, I just use this as a, as a guide to, to line it up with the edge of the board, it doesn't mean anything. And then when I tap on the screw, the screws go into the board so that it doesn't move. And so here's the way I cut it. This is an Onsred inverted router. Most of you have probably seen this in one of my other movies, but if you haven't, that's what this is. That's all there is to cutting out the numbers. Now I'm gonna, I have a base that these go on, and I'll show you how I make the base. First of all, I'll take this over to the, to the sander and show you how I sand it off. Okay, I got the number all cut, and as you can see, it's got a little, little fuzz on the edges, so what I do, is I just use a belt sander and I just lay it on there gently and it yeah, for about three seconds I turn it around and I sand it for about three seconds and then just one second on the face and so now it's ready to be put together Okay, here's, uh, here's my laser operation. Uh, this is the reason I don't do this on the Onsred is because <clears throat> number one, I like the black. There's going to be an, an internal cut that has square corners that you couldn't do if I was doing it off of a pattern. So this is, I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and cut this now. It's going to take, it's going to take a couple of minutes for it to cut because I'm cutting a quarter inch thick material on my laser and a quarter inch has to cut fairly slow. So I'm going to turn the exhaust fan on now 
so there would be a little bit of noise, but you'll be able to watch it cut. And even though it makes a little noise, you can probably still hear me all right. And this laser is cutting at quarter inch material at 100% power and a speed of about four inches per minute. Now I probably could cut that a little bit faster, but I just want to be sure. I slowed it down to four inches a minute just to be sure that it'll cut out. My timer on my laser told me that was 1 minute and 14 seconds that it took to cut out that first part of that base. I don't know if you noticed it, but you can tell when it's cutting all the way through, that centerpiece just dropped down a little bit, about 15 or 20 thousandths, so that you know when you're cutting something and it does that, you know that it's cut all the way through. It doesn't always drop down like that, but usually small pieces will drop down like that. There's about, we're at about another minute. That was two minutes and 14 seconds. So we'll be about two and a half minutes total by the time we're done, a little over maybe two minutes, 45 seconds. Which is pretty good because if I were cutting these in production, I would have this set up where I'd be cutting 10 or 20 or 30 of them. And then I would be someplace else doing something else well, the laser's doing its job. Okay, the laser finished his job now. I can open it up. I can take the piece of material out. And these are the two pieces. Now what I've got to do is I've got to take these out now and put a slight chamfer on them and sand them off. And then we'll go back I'll show you how I put them together. I made a jig so that I could put these together at the same time that I assembled the entire unit. So you'll see that next. Okay folks, here, here's the two pieces that I cut on the laser. And what I do now is I'm going to, this is my router table. I'm going to put this light chamfer on the top on both of these. Now when I turn this on, It'll have a little noise, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do before I turn it on. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a slight chamfer on the top on both of these. Then I have a jig that I put them together with. I'll show you how I do that. Now there's a slight chamfer on the top on both of these and there's a little bit of burn as you can see from the laser. So I'm going back to my sanding belt and I'm going to sand these just slightly. 
All I'm going to do is turn the belt on. Then I'm, I'm not going to sand the back, just the front of them, just to get that burn off of there. Now the burn is gone. So those are ready to put those are now ready to put together so that's we'll we'll go and I'll show you how I do that okay I got the bases made or the base made and uh, in order to get the base the way I want it for the numbers I have to put it together. I made up this little jig and I'll show you how it works. I put that in there and it's in there so that it's flat and I put it with the chamfer down same as this I put it with the chamfer down but in order to get it to hold I have to put some hot glue on it. I put it in there and I hold it down and maybe uh, the count of five or six is all it takes. That hot glue is, is good stuff. Have to be a little careful on the hot glue that you don't get it too close to the edge, which is what I did here. I got a little close to the edge and it tried to stick in here. That, that glue gun, I put a little bit more glue on it than I wanted to put, but it doesn't matter. I pushed it out before it had a chance to set up. So that's really all there is to making the base for these numbers that I make. Uh, at the most, it takes uh, you know it takes a minute and a half, say two and a half, three minutes a piece to make them. Can we get a close up of that jig? Can you hold that jig up? The jig, so sure. We can see how that is made. Yeah, this is the way I made the jig, and I made it in two pieces. <clears throat> and the bottom piece that holds the first piece. All I do is put it in there, and it, as long as it's on something flat, that's as far in as it's going to go. And the second piece, I made a little bit larger, so that when it goes in, <clears throat> the piece that's already there stops it, and it'll only go in so far. And I've got the radiuses and the edges set, so that when they go together, uh, it just it makes the base. So we'll set that aside for now. Now I'll show you, I have another base here. I have that six that I just cut. Now I'll show you, this is, if I had a double, this is what it would look like. This is what a double looks like assembled. And this is a, this is a single that's assembled. So I'll set those aside now. In order to finish this, this is the way it's going to finish, just like this. That's why I cut this opening in here with a square edge so that it doesn't interfere. Now, have to be a little careful on this. Normally I use a smaller glue gun, but I've got this one set up, so I'm going to use it. But I want to be careful not to use too much glue in there. Otherwise, it'll squeeze out. And that's all it takes is just that much glue. And I set it in there and I center it. And I turn it so that I can make sure that it's vertical. And once you hold it for eight or ten seconds, it's done. Literally, that's all there is to making table numbers. Now these are six inches high. The base is another quarter inch or another half inch. But since it's, this is set down a quarter inch, so overall it's about six and a quarter inches high. And so this is just, uh, this is a senior moment. I've had people that, that <clears throat> were curious about the table numbers that I make. So I thought, well, it'd be kind of fun to, make a complete video 
show people how I make these. I get five bucks a piece for them, so uh, I don't make a lot on them. But generally, when somebody's ordering table numbers, they're going to order 20, 25, 30. I've got patterns up to uh, like 50. I've had orders for 50 of them. So uh, when you get orders for 25 or 30 or something, at five bucks a piece, uh, and it takes you three or four or five minutes to do them, uh, it makes it worthwhile. It's not, uh, you're not going to get rich on it. But you make a good product and people really like them. Uh, people see them and they like them. So now <clears throat> one thing that I do that I didn't show is I can set these up on the laser after I get the base cut. I can set up and it takes about nine or ten seconds once I get these set up to laser the uh, my name and my brand in the bottom. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. But that just shows you what you can do. So there, my friends, you have Dave Senior Moments for this Saturday. Or this Sunday, actually. So uh, I can't think of anything else to add to that. You may have some questions on it. If you do, just email me. But as for now, that's a senior moment, and we'll see you next time.